Sensors are the backbone of a smart home. They power all of my home automations and I've talked about them a lot on this channel. The first sensor that I ever reviewed was the Everything Presence One and I called it a game changer for my smart home. It was the first sensor I used that enabled reliable presence detection. In other words, knowing if someone was in a room or not. This opened the door to all new automation possibilities like how I regulate the thermostat, the alarm, and lighting in ways that save me time and money. Well, today I'm looking at a follow-on to this, the Everything Presence Light. With this sensor, you can now track up to three targets across four unique zones. I'll dive into what it does, how to set it up and create custom zones and how to use it in your smart home. I'll also compare it with the Everything Presence One and help you decide which presence detection sensor is right for you. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. The Everything Presence Light is a presence detection sensor. It includes a high link LD2450 millimeter wave sensor with up to six meters or about 20 feet of sensing range, making a good fit for small to medium sized rooms. The sensor can track up to three targets simultaneously. This way, you can make an automation based on how many people are in a room or where they are located in that room with customizable detection zones. It has an ambient light sensor, which is helpful for turning on the lights when a room is too dark. And it can function as a Bluetooth proxy for Home Assistant, the home automation platform this sensor was designed to be used with. The Everything Presence Light comes fully assembled in a white injection molded case with a ball joint stand, allowing you to adjust the sensor's angle for your environment. This kit version that I purchased with my own money includes a USB-A to USB-C right angle braided cable, though you'll need to supply your own wall power brick. You can scan a QR code printed on the inside of the box to access the quick start guide, which brings me to device setup. The Everything Presence Light connects to Home Assistant via Wi-Fi and ESP Home. To get started, plug the Everything Presence Light into a computer using the included USB cable. Open a Google Chrome browser and visit the link for updating and connecting to Wi-Fi in the description. All right, let's go ahead and install the firmware on the Everything Presence Light by coming to this page here. I plugged the device into my computer. I'm gonna select Home Assistant. This is the sensor that I have inside, the LD2450. And I will go ahead and install this as a Bluetooth proxy. Click Connect. Make sure you're doing this on a Google Chrome browser if you don't see Connect here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this USB serial port right here. Click Connect. Everything presence light, install. Yes, I want to install this and just give it a moment to finish erasing and then installing the firmware on the device. Okay, installation is completed, we'll hit next. And here I can connect to my local Wi-Fi network. Okay, now I wanna to add to Home Assistant. It auto discovered the device from ESP Home. Yes, I wanna add this to Home Assistant. Visiting the device info page in Home Assistant, there are separate sections for device controls and sensors. Controls allow you to set the size of the room using the max distance field. It's important to adjust this to the max length of your room, otherwise you may get unwanted detections. Also under controls, you can set up custom detection zones. By default, it only displays entities for one general zone. If you want to use multi-zone tracking, you'll need to click entities not shown and then enable the entities for zones two, three, and four, which will appear after about 30 seconds. Under the sensor section, 
you can see all of the real-time detections, including the brightness level in the room, if occupancy is detected, and the movement and position of anyone in that space. The X entities reflect how far left or right you are from the sensor, whereas the Y sensor shows how near or far you are from the sensor. You can also see in real time if any one of your custom detection zones is occupied or not. Chances are, if you purchase this device, you are interested in creating custom detection zones. Well, the process of creating custom detection zones is not super straightforward, so let me share how I did it. I would sit in the area where I wanted to create a zone, for example, a chair, and then move from one corner of my imagined zone to the far opposite corner. This would give me the outer limits for the target one X and Y positions relative to the location of the Everything Presence light sensor. I then entered those outer limits in the control section, putting the lower number in the begin field and the larger number in the end field for both the X and the Y. I believe it's important that the zones don't completely overlap. After I did this for each of my custom zones, I would then sit in that zone and confirm if the zone's occupancy sensor changed from zero to one, meaning one person was in that zone, and then back to zero once I moved away. It takes a little playing around with, but you can do it. Let's look at some of the interesting ways to use a sensor like this. To start, you can use it as a single zone presence detection sensor. This will tell you if a room is occupied, which is useful for automations that turn off lights, adjust the thermostat, arm the alarm, start the robot vacuum, and a lot more based on when a space is no longer occupied. You can reach the full potential of the Everything Presence light by creating multiple detection zones. A reading lamp can turn on when you sit in the living room armchair and turn off when you move to the couch. If you share a bedroom, you could create an automation that turns off the home's indoor lights and arms the alarm when it's late in the evening and two targets are detected in the bedroom. To demonstrate how precise this sensor is, I created detection zones for individual chairs at our dining room table. When I sit in one chair, the light turns blue. As I step away, the light turns off. Once I move to another chair, the light turns green and then off as I step away. And if I move to a third chair, the light turns red and then off again once I stand up. Speaking of lights, the Everything Presence light has a built-in LED. This could be used as a notification light, for example. It could light up red if it's late at night and the garage door has been left open. Just know that it can only display a red light. So how does the Everything Presence light compare with the Everything Presence 1? The EP light is positioned as a more affordable entry into presence detection. The EP light kit is $37, which includes the sensors, case, and USB cable. The EP1 kit is $55, which includes the sensors and USB cable. The case will cost you another $10. When I purchased the EP1 kit around two years ago, it did not include a USB cable, so that's a helpful addition here with the light. Nice. Even though you pay 10 extra dollars to get the case for the EP1, it's unfortunately a worse case. In fact, the case was the only issue I had with the EP1 when I reviewed it. I'm happy to say that the injection molded case with the EP light kit is super strong, and I also think it's a slightly nicer appearance. I do still wish it had a magnetic mounting option, but I know I could add that myself. The EP light is also smaller than the EP1, making it a little more discreet. The most differentiating factor for the EP light, though, is its ability to track multiple targets across multiple detection zones at the same time. This is completely lacking in the EP1. Well, why is that, and why does the EP1 cost more? Well, several reasons. The EP1 has 
different millimeter wave sensor, the DF Robot Sen0609 versus the Hidelink LD2450 in the EP Lite. While the millimeter wave sensor in the EP1 does not support multi-target or multi-zone tracking, it does offer some advantages depending on what's important to you. Millimeter wave in the EP1 is likely better at still presence detection, and you can make small adjustments to the millimeter wave sensitivity. This can be crucial to avoid subtle movements like a curtain shifting from a ceiling fan or an air vent triggering your automation. The millimeter wave detection zone is also far larger on the EP1, making it much better for large open rooms. And the EP1 includes several sensors that the EP Lite does not, most notably an industrial PIR motion sensor, but also sensors for measuring a room's temperature and humidity. This makes the EP1 a great all-in-one sensor, especially when you use PIR motion to trigger lights turning on and millimeter wave to trigger lights turning off. Both the EP Lite and EP1 have an ambient light sensor for measuring a room's brightness and can function as a Bluetooth proxy in a home assistant. I'll note that the EP Lite arrived fully assembled, whereas the EP1 required assembling the board and the case, at least when I received it, though it was easy to do. So what do I like about the Everything Presence Lite? Well, the price, and the quality of the case. The Everything Presence One has been my favorite smart home sensor since the day I got it, but it was a little pricey and the case wasn't good. The Everything Presence Lite addressed all of this with a lower price and a solid case. The number one way to improve the Everything Presence Lite is to make zone setup easier. Playing around with the X and Y coordinates is not super intuitive and it requires a lot of manual work to get it configured just right. Apollo Automation offers a multi-zone presence sensor, the MTR1, which I previously reviewed. You can connect the MTR1 via Bluetooth to a third-party app that makes zone creation fast and easy. It allows you to see a visual of targets moving about a room, and you can just drag and drop virtual boxes to create custom detection zones. I would love to see this functionality available natively within Home Assistant. That may be more of a shortcoming of Home Assistant than the Everything Presence Lite, but such a feature may really help accelerate adoption of powerful sensors like this. Overall, the Everything Presence Lite is a quick an accurate presence detection sensor at a more cost-effective price point than the Everything Presence One, while adding support for multi-target and multi-zone tracking. This makes it ideal if you'd like to create home automations based on the number of people in a room or their precise location in that room. Personally, I prefer the excellent millimeter wave range and still presence detection coupled with the onboard PIR motion sensor in the Everything Presence One but you can't go wrong with either pick. Let me know in the comments how you're using multi-target or multi-zone tracking in your smart home or any interesting ways that you might. If you want to explore more about smart home sensors, check out the video playlist here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. EP1, we need to talk. No, no, it's not you, it's me. Look, I know you've been through a lot, but I just need someone a little less fragile right now. Is it anyone you know?